Now you guys as environmental engineers will be here to solve a problem. Okay? There's a problem in the town and we have to find a way to solve it. The mayor of the town needs a little assistance from you guys. So let's take a look at the letter from the mayor. We are having problems here in Greentown and we don't know the cause. Some people who live in Greentown have noticed plants dying. Other residents have noticed sick animals. In the big pond in town, lots of frogs seem to be dying. We have environmental test results from three years ago. All of these results are fine. Please help us figure out what's going on. We look forward to hearing from what you find. Sincerely, Mayor Higgins. So use your highlighter and you can talk with your group. I want you to highlight what details you see that could help us as environmental engineers. What can we pull from our letter that gives us clues to what we might have to figure out or determine the problem is? So don't tell me, you can go ahead and highlight. Why are we being called as environmental engineers? Why are we being asked to come and help? The mayor said three years ago everything was fine. And he, th he still thinks it's fine, but he has no solution to what's going on. Now, do you think the only organisms, like the frogs, are the only ones being affected? What else could be affected by this environment? And you can use your map, go back to your map and take a look. What else could be affected? The rest of the animals. The rest of the animals that live there. We know that there's not just one type of animal that might live in our pond. So I want you to look at this question for me. How do environmental engineers use their knowledge of soil and water to investigate environmental problems? Okay, now we know in our green town that there's issues. There's issues and concerns going on. And then as environmental engineers, we want to run a few tests. Okay, we know that environmental engineers do a lot of testing. They test the soil, they test the water. And you guys are going to get a chance to test something called the pH. This is a pH scale. Okay, we can use this as environmental engineers to test the soil and the water. So the way this scale works is the lower the number you go, the more acid there is. And if we're right in the middle at seven, we're neutral. We're neither an acid and we're not a base. So let's practice taking a look at this pH scale here, okay? So I have a few items up here, okay? You tell me if it's acidic or it's basic, based on what I call out, okay? Let's see, tomato juice. What level is it marked at? Four. At a four. How about lemon juice? Acidic, and what do we look at for this scale? What is it marked as? A two. How about water here on our scale? What do you guys see? It's in the middle, so what word do we use if it's in the middle? Neutral. Neutral. So what I would like to do is, let me give you a pH scale that you guys will look at. These are all samples from our town in Greentown. The mayor was able to give us a few samples, because without samples, we won't be able to test the soil and water. Okay, I want to show you how the litmus paper works. I'm going to do lemon juice. I'm only putting it halfway in. Okay. Now we're going to do further tests to see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and hand each of you guys a little tester paper. And I'm also going to hand you guys, okay, like a sheet. Miss Hall. Wait, more didn't come out the same. Oh, it's green. It's green. I want to come out the same. It's red. Uh-oh. 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 It smells so bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's red. Oh, it's red. Yes, because they need a little bit of ink. Yeah, that's why they're dying. So that's why they're dying. Number 10 is too high. That's why they're dying. Okay. Let's start with the Greentown Farm. Raise your hand if you had Greentown Farm. Okay? What was it three years ago? 6.5. 6.5. And what was your sample today? 5.0. What was it? 5.0. So everybody should be recording on your yellow sheet. Someone should be recording. 5.0. So for Greentown Farm, as of today, today's present sample, it is a 5.0. We know we're testing for pH. You can just go ahead and write 5.0 for that. Okay, let's move on to the next location. What did you guys get? Um, so we got green, green, um, green town pond. Okay, so let's wait for a second. 
I want to make sure all the groups can hear this so that you're recording the correct data. Go ahead. Um, we got a 6.5. Okay, so 6.5, was that in the past three years or today? Past. Okay, so the past, they got a 6.5, and what do you have now? A pH 1. Oh, they have a level of what? The pond. Okay, for their Greentown pond water, they have a 1.0. We went high on some of the results for today, and some of the results dropped. Show of hands. How many people believe that there's pollution in the environment in Greentown? How many people believe that there's pollution in the environment in Greentown? Okay, hands down. Now, are you surprised by some of this change? No. no yeah. I hear no, yes. Can I get a little more detail? I am not surprised. You're not surprised? Why? Why not? Because they have so many factories. Why do you think factories is such a problem? What's going on? Because um, the factories let out the dirty air. What else can factories do that might harm our environment? Fish, just like and, and animals, like sea creatures, just just like get and I mean like get us out of oil and the oil pollute all over the water. And I also just kill that environment, right? Yeah. Okay. So based on what we've learned today, do you think we have a better understanding of what an environmental engineer does? Do you think we can take all these test results and data to improve and help environment and the ecosystem if there is a problem? Okay, so we'll take that for tomorrow's lesson and continue on with what we're working on. I had fun setting up for lesson two because lesson two dives into what the engineer is, like who they really are. So the fact that lesson two created an imaginary green town and the kids really thought there was a green town that existed. That was the funny part. And it lets them see the world of the engineer. You know, what really does the engineer do and how it relates back to what they see now in the present. And it makes that connection for them, for the real world. <laughs>